When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See, thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to worship you and to serve you. Father, I pray that today you begin to move upon many lives. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that change begin to break off of their lives today. Father, Lord, that they walk out of this place. Lord, they didn't just hear a preacher preach. But they felt your spirit and your glory began to move upon their lives. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, that they would not be here without you. Heavenly Father, Lord, it is, it is you who had brought them out. You touched them, God, even while they was unclean. Heavenly Father, Lord, when nobody else would. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> praise God. We're going to... Uh, as we begin to uh, discuss this morning, talking about those who collided into Jesus. And we all have a story somewhere in our lives of where we run into Jesus. And more likely than none, it wasn't just in church. You know, because we come to church and, and I, I don't know about you guys. Uh, but I was raised in church. I mean, I was raised in church ever since I was little bitty. My, 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 my dad was an Assembly of God pastor. And he also uh, uh, preached and pastored in the Pentecostal Church of God later on in years. And, uh, and so we was raised up in uh, what we call Holy Ghost Church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Holy Ghost Church? Praise God. I, li listen, I, 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 I'm not talking about the fun stuff where we all eat pizzas as the kids. I'm talking about when church got all the kids got around the altars and we knelt around the altars and if we got up too soon, somebody slapped us with one of those big old family Bibles, you know. <laughs> said, you ain't done yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about the, 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 them, them kinds of churches that, that uh, people begin to call out and begin to say, God, we can't do this without you. They would pray and say, Lord, move on their lives. Lord, find them. And believe it or not, that's what he would do. He would find us. I remember one time coming back from Lane, Oklahoma. Uh, it's just about 10 miles east of Atoka on Highway 3. Lane, Oklahoma. And I remember coming back from there one night. And, and I shouldn't have even been driving my vehicle because uh, I'd been drinking. And I'd been drinking a little bit too much. And I remember driving down through the highway, but I remember driving down the road and I'm thinking, Lord, the, the uh, first thing that came into my mind was, I hope I don't get a ticket. And then when I was driving through, all of a sudden, I had this, this, this hunger for God that I didn't just come out of nowhere. And I looked up and there was a, 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 a little community there in between there. It's called Harmony. And it's got this Baptist church and right there on the side of the road. And this Baptist church has got this big old sign. This is Harmony Baptist Church. And then they got this cross standing in front of it. And they got this light standing in front of the cross. And all of a sudden, I don't know how it did, but all of a sudden, that cross just illuminated and it got huge. Right there driving down the road. And I remember at that moment, that was one of my collisions with Christ. Even though I was raised in church and I knew and I went to church and I knew about Jesus. I knew about the Holy Ghost. I knew about getting saved. I, I, I knew all of those things. But there all by myself, whoever was praying for me to run into Jesus on that night at 18 years old, that cross stood in the way out of nowhere. It stood there. It stood there. That was the moment as God began to move. I remember later on in years, several uh, having instances of running into Christ. Been in places where I shouldn't be. Run my truck off of a bridge. Hit a bridge. Run my truck off of a bridge. Flipped it. Threw me out. And I remember laying on the ground and watching my truck roll over me like it was slow motion. 
I remember getting up, shaking my head and getting up. There, there was a, a gentleman who, who came by and, and uh, picked us up and he said, man, if you don't get this truck off the road, he said, the county's going to see it and they're going to get the uh, tag off of it. And they're going to come find you and then they're going to know that you've been drinking and, 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 and they're going to do all this stuff. He said, so I'm going to go home and I'm going to uh, get me a chain. I'm going to pull it out. He said, before I do, can I pray for you? <laughs> Those instances where we run into Christ, where we collide, I mean literally just boom. And sometimes we take for granted. Sometimes we think, oh, Lord, uh, Lord, uh, 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 get, get, get Sister Lulu and bring them to church. God don't need them to come to church to meet them. A lot of times what happens is our church gets staunchy, gets clicky. It gets all of these things. We come in and, and, and we got certain sides we like to sit on. We got certain parking lots we like to park in or parking lots, parking spaces. Praise God. And, 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 and we get so clicky sometimes when we come in, we think, well, you know, this is my spot. This is what I do. And if anything gets out of the way, what happens is, is that the Holy Ghost is a perfect gentleman and he does not move in confusion. And what happens a lot of times is our church does not let the power of God, the real power of God begin to flow. So God says, I'm going to bypass your building and I'm going to meet him out on the road somewhere. I'm going to show up across while the drunk out of their mind. I'm going to pick them up on the side of the road after they flip their vehicle and I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to do those things. I'm going to collide. This story here about the leper is a classic story. It's a, the, the Bible says that Jesus come down from the mountain and people was following him from all over because he'd already been doing a few things. So he's, he, he's moving out of the way off of the beaten path. Remember uh, Thursday when I told you that we are in a time where hurting people are going to find you? That's right. Listen to me. Hurting people will find you. Hurting people. God is building this revival through hurting people. What's going to happen, they're going to get hurt. They're going to come in and they're going to find. And not only that, they're going to get hungry. They're going to get an appetite for a move of God. I don't want people to get another appetite for entertainment. I don't need people to get another appetite for, for, for things going on that we can look this good and sound this good and be this good. What I need is for people to come into the house of God and get an appetite appetite for Jesus. And when we see that, this man come down, or Jesus come down, and the Bible said that the leper sought him out. He found him. And this is what he said. Listen, listen. Some people says, well, you know, the leper just didn't, let's listen. The leper had faith. It's not saying that he didn't have faith. He said, if you will, listen to the words, if you will, you can heal me. The first thing I learned in this story, I got a two-point uh, uh, message this morning. The first thing I learned in this story is Jesus will touch the unclean. Amen. 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 He didn't stand from a distance and he, said, he didn't say, okay, give me my mask because it's corona. He didn't say, well, I'm going to mask up before I go. Come on, somebody. Listen. He reached out and he touched the unclean. All his disciples said, oh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in the clip there. Oh, don't do that. He, he's a leper. He's unclean. Jesus did not pay them no attention. This man came to him. I need to tell somebody this morning. I don't care what you're going to. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what somebody said about you. I need to tell you this morning that you are not at a place in your life where Christ will not touch your condition or your situation. He is looking for people that he can heal. He came to him on the road. Amen. And the first thing I, I get out of this story is the Bible said that Jesus reached and he touched him. 
See, sometimes we think we're completely out of touch. Sometimes we think, well, we, we, we've absolutely done too much for Jesus to really heal me. Or if he was going to heal me, then he would have already did it. The, the enemy likes to tell us, well, God, God will do this and God will do this. But, but or, or, or uh, let me say it like this. Some people will tell us. Everybody say, help me, preacher. Help me, preacher. Well, you know what? If you'll do this, then God will do that. Honey, that is the most erroneous way of preaching and teaching I have ever heard in my life. That God is sitting back and waiting on us to do something before he moves. That is not what he does. He has already done it. Now, our faith has got to come into a place and we got to move. Now, I understand and I believe in repentance. And there were some things that we are holding back because we have really not repented from. I believe in the repentance part. But let me tell you something. Some people are sitting in church and here's the thing. is the enemy is playing tricks on their mind and they're keeping them back. We have that promise from God. We are working on delegated authority. Jesus already said said it and now I'm going to do it. When God already says something, all we got to do is get out and do what he says. Jesus came because God sent him. He didn't just show up one day. God said, I need an answer to mankind. He said, I've done tried this covenant thing with man and it didn't work out. I've done, I done made covenant with Abraham. It didn't work out. They keep breaking it. So I'm going to make covenant with myself. I'm, I'm just going to stand out of heaven. I'm, I'm going to clothe myself in humanity. I'm, I'm going to be born into this world. I'm, and I'm going to make a covenant with man myself. I'm, my blood is going to shed. I'm, and no matter what they do, I'm, or no matter where they've been, I'm, it cannot break my love. So when Christ came, it teaches me something right here when I read this. Is that is that the leper, the unclean. See, be, be, because I mean, I read in one part of the story and, and, and uh, uh, this leper here, this was different than the 10 lepers because the 10 lepers says that when Jesus came and he healed the 10 lepers, the Bible said that nine left, but one came back and Jesus called him a foreigner because he was a Samaritan. But in this one, I realize this, this is an Israelite. This is a covenant man because Jesus tells him covenant things. Go show yourself to the priest. Listen, all the other nine might have been covenant, but the one that came back of the ten lepers, the one that came back, Jesus looked at him and he said, he said, he said, because you have come back, he said, you are now made whole. Go your way. He didn't tell him go run back to the priest now. But in this story here, this tells me that church people, church people can get diseased in their mind. And it can keep them away from everybody else. They can get to the place some people says, well, preacher, what are we going to do? How are we going to help these people right here? How are we going to help these people like this? I tell you how we're going to help them. We're just going to keep walking for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> In, in just a week or so, we're going to start this class, me and Anna and, and, and Linda Wilson, and, and we're going to get Mike Burks and, and, and uh, some of them involved. And we're going to start this class, and it's called, Now I'm, Sa I, I'm Saved, Now What? Yeah. And I think, I think the biggest issue with a lot of us sometimes is that we come into church and we learn how to shout. Don't shout me down yet. We learn how to raise our hands. Man, we learn how to get our groove on when the music is playing. But when it comes to an actual living for God, sometimes we get lost. Because we don't have an understanding of what salvation really is. 
We don't have an understanding that the power of salvation is strong. It is deep. And when God calls us and brings us in, the power of salvation, he covers us. And the Bible says that he gives us the grace to go through things. It is by the grace of God that I am saved. And so by the grace of God that I am saved, it's the grace of God that keeps me because sometimes I get fleshy. Preacher, if you got fleshy this week, only once. <laughs> well, maybe twice. <laughs> or three times. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, is he came looking. Nobody else would help him. He's on the outskirts. He's on the outside. The Bible said that Jesus come down from the mountain. This man didn't come into town. He wasn't allowed to come into town. He wasn't allowed to come around people. And he knew what he was not allowed to do. But one thing that he did know is there is a man that's been healing people. And I got to find him. There is a man that's been touching lives. And I got to find him. There is a man that turned water into wine. And I got to find him. There's a man that raised a boy for Nain. And I got to find him. There's there's a man who raised Peter's mother-in-law and I got to find him. Come on, somebody. When Jesus starts doing some things and people start colliding into him and they start running into him, things begin to change and word gets out and people start hunting that Jesus this changed you. They start seeking after. See, sometimes we get Oh, how, how, how could I say it? We, we, we come to church like it's some big masquerade party. And we just hide all of our feelings. And because, you know, we've been saved for quite a while. And, and bless God, we don't want nobody to see our internal hurts or, or things. And I'm not saying that you ought to spill out and bleed all over everybody every time you get cut. I'm not saying that. Sometimes you need a Band-Aid to, to hold it up because everybody can't handle your blood. Everybody can't handle when you bleed. I'm not saying, but, but what I am saying is that the church has played the strong, the, <coughs> the strong man for too long <coughs> that we begin to preach like nobody ought to have any weaknesses. And if you do have any weaknesses, then you don't belong in here. You need to go over here and learn this. And we need to just get it right. We are all in some point of another have failed God in one area and stumbled. But we need to be strong and show people that a righteous man would fall down seven times. But he, he'll get back up the eight. Let's quit, let, 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 let's quit trying to fake it till we make it and let's just be real and let's find Jesus and let's hunt him down. Let's go into the places that most people don't go into and let's let them see what Christ can do. He's an Israelite. I get this out of the story because Jesus is following the complete Law. He hadn't stepped over into Greece yet. He hadn't, he hadn't died yet. He hadn't, he hadn't uh, brought the power of salvation completely yet. He's still working underneath the, the law. He never got out of the law. Matter of fact, he told his disciples, do not get out of the lost house of Israel. You stay here. But when the Holy Ghost came, he said, now go sick them. Yeah. Yeah. Now go get him. But until now, we are here. So he stayed underneath that rim. And this is what he tells the man. After he touches him, after he loves on him, get this, after he loves on him, after he embraces him with his condition and with the sickness and with the illness that is up on his life, as he embraces him and loves on him, and then, and then this man is healed. And when he is healed, he says, now. Go show yourself to the priest. Because the only reason that man was on the outside anyway was because the priest had exiled him out. Nobody had that much power to say, hey, get out of here, you're a leper. But the priest had the power to move him out and label him yeah. as a leper. Yeah. 
And not only label him as leper, but now say you wear this tunic so that we can see you wherever we go. So that when we see you, we may not know your condition, but by the clothes you're wearing, we can see you afar off and know exactly what you are so we can stay away from you. And see, I think that the church has fallen into a category sometimes. We're hurting people are wanting to come to church, but they're sick and tired of being judged. They're sick and tired of being labeled. And the only place they can really get the healing is inside here. They ain't going to find it at the bingo parlor. But I say, I love the preacher. They're not going to find it in the deer stand. (laughs) Got them Missourians looking at me. <clears throat> Actually, you probably can't find him in the deer stand. Probably sometimes faster than you can find him in them strict, staunch, stiff neck. Everybody's like, what else are we, preacher? <laughs> <laughs> we get so many things that the outside has labeled us as. I mean, this man didn't go into the temple because he was already said, look, this is what you are. There's nothing we can do. See, see, the church, you want the church likes to do? My goodness, I'm going to get in trouble. Everybody say, I love the preacher. Here's what the church likes to do. They like to say, okay, well, you know, you got a problem. Maybe we can find uh, some place where you can go in. Maybe we can call and see if there's a bed for you to get in so that you can get healed. Maybe, maybe there's a program. And li- 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 listen, 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 listen. That's the sign of a lazy church that doesn't want to do their job. And, ah, and fast. I'm about to blow up now. And fast. And pray. And get a hold of God. And say, God, you deliver them. God, you heal them. You use me. And you let them be healed and delivered. Because the church has played the system. My God, don't get me on this Facebook rant, because I will. We played the system and we sat back and we've gotten lazy and we think church is for our entertainment and we think church is a place where we can go and, and the men will cook us breakfast, praise God. And, 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 and church is just a, a good hangout and it's become a social club and that's why the church is not affecting the outside world. My God, I'm preaching now. And that's why the church has become phony, it's become pharisaical and we have sat back and we want to see who can pray the prettiest, uh, who can pray the longest, uh, who's got the best music, uh, who's got the best sound, uh, who's got the best location. Uh, my God, uh, and the church is set back uh, and lost its power uh, and the hurting uh, or running uh, on the outside uh, and Jesus uh, is healing them uh, in the desert uh, instead of in the temple. <laughs> I think it's time we change that. I think it's time that we step in the place, in the position. Because I'm telling you, this revival right now, this hitting right now, God is after the church first. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's going to get so, I'm talking about church people that's been sitting in church for years. Woo. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it, Carl. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna say it. They've been sitting in church for years and backslid. Yep. Well, you can't backslide. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me you can't backslide. <laughs> I won't say nothing else. There was a time I would stand up in the pulpit and preach. I was as backslidden as they come. You was backslidden. I was as backslidden as they come. And the only time I would even read my Bible was to get a message so I could preach to somebody. And God spoke to me and he said, you cannot do that. You can't read to talk to them. You got to read so I can help you. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, sometimes we get so busy doing for the church, we forget who we're doing it for. And we do it for this. Well, they'll notice me here. Well, I'll do this. And maybe if I do my job good enough, the church will pay me. And I'll get paid by the church. And before 
you know it, it becomes a career to become a professional Christian. My God, somebody help me this morning. We got to stand up and be the church and be real. Ah, and be real so other people can see the power of God. I'm so sick and tired of people coming to the church and not having an appetite. We need to have an appetite for the glory of God. But I'm hungry to see you move. So, my first point only took me 25 minutes. Okay. So, the second thing we find out is Jesus is willing to heal. See, we think that it's only by certain conditions. We think it's by only certain ways. Well, if I come to church, if I pay my tithes for four weeks in a row, if I don't cuss as much, (laughs) who are you talking to, preacher? I'm talking to every one of you. If I don't get mad as often, if me and my wife don't have an argument for at least 48 hours, that's a tough one. But anyway, (laughs) then I can come to God and he'll heal me. And we think we got to get our condition right. We think we got to do it just right on this. Some people say, well, you know, you know what? I'll tell you what. Oh, Joe, Joe, I'm going to tell you what. You know, if you do this and if you do that, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, if, if you do all of these things just like this, then God is going to answer your prayers. I mean, man, we're just putting people back into the law, ain't we? I mean, well, go ahead and kill this goat and kill that pigeon and kill that uh, 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 mule over there. Well, don't kill no mules because that ain't good. Anyway, and 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 uh, and and this way and 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 and, and, and I come to God uh, at six o'clock in the morning uh, and have a burnt uh, offering sacrifice here uh, and then go over here and then do that. See, see, listen, listen, listen. Jesus became uh, the burnt offering for you uh, and the burnt offering. Uh, the only thing that you got to do now is clean uh, off the altar so you can get back on it again. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your bodies. Uh, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's the, it's the condition of God that's moving on your life. Your job is to get a broom and clean it off so you can get back on it. It's the only condition you got. You can't do anything else or he would have never came. He did it for you. So he will touch the unclean and he will heal you. He'll heal you. Hurting people are attracted to the anointing. Young lady, they're attracted to the anointing. When the anointing is present, you're drawn into it. And the power of God begins to move. And your life is changed. And now there is no condition. God said... I will stand up. Raise your hands to heaven. Somebody touch her. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now, God, you begin to move. You heal this young lady right now. Father, let your glory begin to move from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let your glory now. 
I command deliverance power begin to move. You lying devil, loose her. In the name of Jesus. Wicked is a lie from the pits of hell. Father, cleanse her mind and set her free. <laughs> Listen. The church I grew up in, this was an everyday occurrence. People was getting delivered, set free, filled with the Holy Ghost. Salvation was happening, not just in church, but in t-ball fields, in softball fields, in soccer fields, at the truck stop getting fuel. Things began to happen. And here's what happened is that the church is set back and they haven't seen themselves as what God has already declared who they are. And Jesus wanted to make this point. He knew this leper was going to find him. He knew exactly what was going to take place. When everybody else looked at him and said, don't do it, he did it anyway. Not only, not only did he heal him, but he changed his clothes. Yes. He said, on your way to the priest, I don't want you to go the same way you came here. I want you to be completely changed. Amen. And on your way to the priest, everybody who thought they known you, I want them to see that you changed your clothes. You don't have to wear that anymore. They don't have to identify that with you anymore. You're not the same 18-year-old kid that you was then. You're not the same boy who robbed the liquor store and went to prison. You're not the same young lady who got pregnant in high school and everybody laughed at and said they won't ever be anything. And you let their words just deframe you. And now you sit back and you haven't become anything. And four kids later, whoever I'm talking to, you become dependent on a man. And God says to get up because that's not who you are. And to Get up and don't be, be dependent on a man. That what they said you was, that's not who you are. And you are healed and set free in the name of Jesus. Because God is moving. He's moving in the churches because he's going to get the churches first. Because when the church gets it, then they ain't got a problem on the frozen food section aisle of Walmart saying, hey, do you know who Jesus is? They ain't got a problem driving down Broadway and stopping and waving at somebody and saying, hey, do you know who Jesus is? Now they want to put them cute little bumper stickers on their car and tell everybody they're number one when they make them mad. Well, their bumper sticker says they're a Christian. Well, they're barely saved. Hmm. I didn't know you could be barely saved. Well, apparently so. Pastor Anna, come piano, please. So listen. Listen. This man collided into Jesus. Now we'll get into this series. And we'll talk about a lot of different people who collided. Some collided not because they wanted to find him. Some collided because they was drug all the way to him in their act. But I'm telling you right now that this is who Christ is. He's not just the man who died, but he is redeemer. You know what that word redeem means? Let's put it like this. So you got a piece of property 
and you've got a title deed to it, but somewhere along the way, it has gotten lost. And they're trying to figure out who owns it. If you come and you bring that title deed, you say, I need to redeem what is mine. That's exactly what Christ did. He said, I made these jokers. <laughs> And they lied on me and lied about me and run from me, but I love them anyway. They are mine. They have always been mine. I created with my own hands. I thought in my own mind. I pulled them up out of the dirt in the garden and I put and breathed life into them. Have you ever wondered why Jesus went back to the garden and, and, and prayed? It's because it was in the garden that you were made. And so before he leaves, he says, devil, I'm coming back to the same place that I made these people at and I'm going to redeem them. They're mine. They are mine. Amen. What we're going to see, we're going to see a revival that brings the church in. Listen, because there's a whole big world out there Amen. that needs this Jesus. Amen. You'd have never thought that right here in America right here in America with church on every corner every little community that you go into. I don't care if the community is a hundred people. There's usually a church of some sort or some kind <coughs> in that community. And still the world is confused. Because we've, we've come and we've tried to float it all up with our own ideas and the rudiments of this world. Men's thinking. Doctrination. Legalization. We've messed this whole success story of God up. He hasn't lost. He's never lost. Amen. He's never known defeat. He is the power for Almighty. World champion. Always been. And you are the sons and daughter of a king. That's why he's coming back after the church first. Hey, prodigal. I know you thought about all the things you're going to say to your daddy. The prodigal son was in the hog pen. He said, this is what I'm going to tell my daddy. He didn't even get a chance to. When his daddy saw him on the road, his daddy ran to him. And the prodigal son didn't even get to give his speech. That's what God's doing to the church. He don't need to hear your speech. He's been looking for you. He's been waiting on you. He's been planning to kill the fatted calf. He's got a party just for you. Who am I talking to? He's got a party just for you. He's going to run to you. He's waiting on you. Every head bowed.